Jones was still smiling yesterday morning despite a positive COVID test having forced him into another 11th hour alteration. Two loose head drops lost in the same week means there's a test start on debut for Sales, Bev and Rod. The backline alterations are by design. Captain Owen Farrell restored in the midfield. Marcus Smith at fly half. Manitou Alangi all over the place probably. The one left without a seat when the music stopped was Adam Radwan who is dropped from the 23. The Wallabies also have prop problems, and given the circumstances, they're more serious than England's. Both tight heads unavailable, so the centurion James Slipper moves over from loose head. 21-year-old Gus Bell gets just his second start. Injury to Jordan Vataya has prompted a rejig in the back line. Dave Rennie expecting plenty of high balls, so he's turned to the experience of Kirtley Beale at fullback. Andrew Kellaway shifts to the wing on the bench. Trevor Davison's versatility. It's a godsend for Eddie Jones. Picked originally as a tight head, he fills in it loose. Ollie Hoskins, who we saw in tears there, set for a dream debut for the Wallabies. Well, Dowie, alongside me, you made your test debut against the Wallabies for England. Early thoughts. Uh, early thoughts with the talk all week, Martin, has been about props, isn't it, or the lack of them from both sides. There are also injuries for the Wallabies and absentees in the backs. And for England, they're tighter and fit again. Tuolang has been moved to the side of the pitch. However, for me, the people that hold the key to victory were six, seven and eight. Can England stop the flow of quick ball like Scotland did? Or can Australia get back to their blistering ball carrying best? We're about to find out. The referee from South Africa, Jaco Paper, assisted by AJ Jacobs and Pierre Broussey. Stuart Berry is the TMO. Well, it has the feel almost of a World Cup final. It's very noisy indeed at the home of English rugby. An early touch there for Tom Wright, who switches wings today. On there from James O'Connor. The Wallabies, well, living on the edge in the opening minute. Kellaway clears. Finds Freddie Stewart, who has been as solid as granite in his early days as an England fullback. Like Marcus Smith, though, it's a big step up for both of them when it comes to playing against a team like Australia today. That was taken in by Gus Bell, the young Waratah. The two loose heads today, the starting loose heads, born within a few weeks of one another, they're just 21. That in itself unusual at this level. There is Marcus Smith. Eddie Jones said before the match, it's absolutely important, by White, play off. crucial Everybody for on Smith, that he finds the rhythm of the game early. Last week's Hold player of the Hold match, up. Henry Slade. Yep. A half volley to right. Right looks at the options, too many white jerseys in front of him. That's a good kick, though. Over the shoulder of Johnny May. Well, it wasn't the cleanest contact from May, but it's worked rather nicely. Well, intent from Australia right from the kickoff, moving the ball in deep in their 22. And you can see England's uh, game plan straight away is to kick the ball back, put pressure on Australia, hit them hard in the wrecks, disrupt that boy's ball. Rennie's uh, incensed about something. It'll be interesting now, where is Tuolangi lining up? Yes, he's just outside centre. So uh, what Eddie Jones said about him playing 
Holy on the wing is absolutely true. He's going to move him 12, 13, possibly 10, and possibly still on that wing. Yes, it's interesting because Henry Slade has almost slipped in the defensive pattern into the full back position. We thought that might happen with Tuolangi almost lining up in midfield in defence. Dave Rennie expecting that. And in the hands there of Lenny Kitao, who's had a good start to his test career. Scored a couple of tries in that fantastic second win for the Wallabies against the world champion South Africa in Brisbane. Well, you've got 13 in the line and two behind you, Martin. Slade is one of those, Johnny May is that, so they've got two, almost two full-backs there. Stewart is on the right wing as, as we speak. And this will go up high into the south-west skyline. Former extra man, Nick White, finding an old teammate. But it's a penalty going against England. I think it's one of my bugbears Pat hates running a different line when you don't need to. It's Sinclair's been singled out. Stewart's got this covered all over the place. Well, I think it was better It was Rod, Rod I apologise yeah. to Sinclair. It was, it was a prop, it was Rod, and this should be an easy three points. It's a long way out, but this guy is a very, very good kicker. And nice to see him back in an Aussie shirt, Martin. Well, there's plenty of experience on the park today, but in terms of years, at this level, no one goes as far back as James O'Connor. Made his debut this very week, 13 years ago, against Italy in Rome. He was just 18. Nick White, crucial there. In the build-up, obviously, Exeter supporters will know him well. He's a very good nuts and bolts. He's a more than a very good nuts and bolts scrum half. He's quick round the round the base. It'd be crucial the other day to get that ball again from his ball carrying forwards, especially those six, sevens, and eights, to get it straight into the fly half of this man. But he's got uh, other things on his mind at the moment. Important kick for the psychology of a fly half. And that will have done wonders for James O'Connor. Certainly will. Packed house. Wickenham is lovely to see the West Carper brimming over with the black stuff and uh, a lot of supporters. There's the new boy. Not perhaps the start uh, he was looking for. The catch there from the tallest man on the pitch today, Rory Arnold. He doesn't need lifting. Two meters. Doesn't need lifting. Really, he's six foot ten. I remember we had one of those, Martin Bayfield. My goodness me. Let's use it. So here's Nick White with the uh, squadron leader Tash. That was well taken by Freddie Stewart, but that's becoming something of a cliche whether he's wearing the strip of Leicester or that of England. Out from Young's. Here's Marcus Smith. He hoists it. Across comes Kellaway. Kellaway doesn't get to it. Slade was following up. Chance now for England to get onto the front foot. Smith, he offloads it. That looks forward. It was forward, says Jakob Paper. But we'll come back for the knock on from Andrew Kellaway. Well, Kellaway got to it, Martin, but unfortunately he didn't catch it. You can see Stewart on the other hand. This is the bomb from Australia from White. He takes it superbly well. Doesn't look like dropping when he didn't against Tonga. And look at that. It's just. Beautiful jump, eye on the ball, unfortunately comes off his shoulder, Slade gets it. England couldn't capitalise on that, they knocked the ball forward, but they come back for the penalty. He got too far under it, didn't he? Yeah, I think, yes. <laughs> Great, prolific try scorer, he got eight, eight or so tries in his first nine, <laughs> nine games, that's not a bad strike rate. Kellaway. England. He was a more, even more prolific at under-20 levels. Yeah. Well, that's the key, is the under 20s. How many under 20s for England, Australia? That's the path, the pathways England cause it. I'm, I'm sure most countries do as well. It's getting these guys early, identifying their potential, pushing them through. They play first team with their clubs, and then get them into the international setup. Owen oh, Farrell back in white. First time he's done that since uh, the days of the Six Nations, which was a very mixed campaign for England. 
And again, the back line, you get Smith directly behind Johnny Murray on his left. You've got Boy. Slade, oh, sorry, Farrell and Tuolangi. Slade outside him, free kick, here we go. Youngs takes it quickly. On there to Farrell. On to Smith, who was looping around. It gets through the first tackle, not through the second. Taken down well by Paisami. Courtney Laws inside to Sam Underhill, with insight here of the 22. And Satoji, cap number 50. Youngs again. Here's Smith. Oh, the gap there for Freddie Stewart and the step. And the Leicester fullback gets his first try in an England jersey. Wow, he absolutely glided onto that and he did take some finishing as well. A lovely stop off his left. But Marcus Smith, again, everyone is potentially talking about him and what he can do in a rugby field. It's just the silky skills, but that guy's line, a classic fullback's line. As it comes out here, the ball from the ball back inside from Courtney Laws to Underhill. That's what breaks it. Hooper can't stop him on the game line, that dominant tackle. The ball comes out the back, at the back, and that's just a beautiful line. And that's a beautiful step, and that is a beautiful try. We also there saw, I think, some of the rotation we're going to see in the back line with Farrell standing at first receiver. The numbers on the backs, you get a hint with England this week certainly when we're talking about the double digits numbers but they're to help us with identification not to be linked necessarily <laughs> to positions but again it's an easy game scotland stopped australia's quick ball last weekend and they very went on to win that game straight away england again to dominate in those close carrying areas that the bench know it that's a tremendous start from england big ball carries getting over the game line and then zipping it through the hands and what a line what a classic fullbacks line High hanging restart, and almost predictably, it's the try scorer <laughs> who rises high. All six foot five of him. Eddie Jones talking last week made the point that the full backs are a bit like goalkeepers. He said, You don't get many goalkeepers in the Premier League who are shorter than six feet. Well, the England rugby team have got one who is six foot five. Good counter rack. Chapman, up to 5%, good counteract. You can see the Australians, they're trying to get a 50-50 decision going their way. It hasn't been held up. But again, a lot of pressure on this guy. There you go, just bring it on, bring it on, holds the man. And that is just, look, it's a combination of the two. Farrell standing at almost first 10, and then second receiver, Marcus Smith, being able to see this big six-foot-five fullback streaking out of his sort of left eye. Going forward, beautiful. A beautiful thing to see. Take it out. Both down. Well, it's going to be a test of Wallaby Metal. Johnny May takes the contact. Doesn't matter how big they are, Nick White has a habit of knocking them down. He really is one of the best tacklers among the scrum halves in world rugby. Kirtley Beale doing what he was selected for. That time it's a penalty against Rob Liotta. He was doing his bit to protect his fullback and doing it illegally. I don't know when people will learn not to do this. We saw a few, didn't we, against Tonga? Uh, but from both sides, we've just seen one from um, England. And then we've seen one from Australia, and what it does, it just gives it a, a talented kicker chance to put the ball almost right into the five-meter area. And it just defies me, and I'm sure it must really annoy defensive coaches, attacking coaches, head coaches. Well, that's a concern. Klaus Sinkler looks like he's taken a bang to the thigh. He's carried hard, two or three big carries from him. Looks like a dead leg. It's a bit of dragging up, but he's all glad he's going to carry on. Well, there you go, he's, two, he's had two carries, seven metres and one offload, and he's had one tackle, so not bad in the first ten minutes for a, for a prop. Look at this, the body positions as well, he's going into the heavy traffic there, so he knows he's going to go to the floor, but he gets that presentation right, and it stops Australia jackling over, especially Hooper, is, who is, I would say, the best in the business in the world at getting over top of the ball. Now England scored a super try, is this one for the donkeys? 
Well, he's still hobbling. It looked like an accidental collision with the knee from Isaac Rodder. Courtney Lawrence. Now, let's see if they can get the choreography right. They've gone wide. In comes Tuilangi, 14 on his back, but operating more like a 12 there. Powering his way through, there was Underhill, presents it for Youngs. Delays the pass, Bevan Rod. On debut. Tom Curry, little step. Liotta makes the tackle. The arm is out. Smith with a little chip ahead. It may come here for Stewart. Jakob Paper is still playing a penalty advantage to England. He's not now. Hands past the ball. Explain. <laughs> well, that guy normally just gets his hands on the ball and nicks it. You can't go past the ball to take your weight, then go back onto the ball. It just basically it stops the, the white side England getting that ball back quick, that instant quick ball that Ben Yangs needs and Marcus Smith needs. But this will be a quick three. But what England are doing so well is getting across the game line. It was the Kamikaze twins, then Underhill with his partner in crime, Kerry just behind him. Onto. Again, it's just Bring good it play. Use the battering ram. Use Tuolangi at, at thir you know, 12 or 13, that time at 13. And these are the two. This is straight in at the 10. That's what you don't want to see as, as a coach, James O'Connor, getting run over by two of England's best ball carriers. So what happens is then they've got to slow the ball up, give penalties away, England will quite happily have these three. Well, those are the two men in the midfield. On the left, that's Len Ikitao. Alongside him, Hunter Paisami. And here is Owen Farrell. England are up to double figures. Indeed, so it's straight away you can see, I don't think, well, Tulang is going to... He's gone back to the uh, uh, the right wing as Eddie Jones looks at his figure, figures at figures or whatever he's looking at there. Martin Gleeson, the attack coach, to his right. That has been a fantastic start for England. Those first ten minutes have really set a marker down now. And they want to go for go, you know go with this now. Again, they keep kicking to this guy who is absolutely brilliant. Stewart, he just takes that ball, sets it up, and they'll go again. Almost lost his shorts that time. Counter rockets moved. Hit from the back. England team lies, so an immediate chance here to strike back. Well, Stewart did the did the job there of getting up on the, on the ball, but his supporters somehow didn't get with him. Australia is scrapping for any bit of ball they can at the moment. So it's the counter at Hooper it at the core straight away. Gets hold the man, they push it back. You can see Stewart struggling to get this ball back. He can present it. Then there's that counter over five. the top. That was Rodder to start with. Yeah. So they've just uh, got three. And this will be three back for Australia. It's going to be quite a scrap on the floor today with that man wearing the gold jersey up against the likes of Sam Underhill and yeah. Tom Curry. Sure. He's only but, winning his 118th cap today, so he's got no experience or leadership or whatever but he's just again the fetchers as they call him uh, in the southern hemisphere and he's he's up there with the best another smooth strike from James O'Connor Dave Rennie, before he took the Australia job, was working up in Glasgow. Just hold his line. Despite one or two distractions, that was a pretty good catch there from Tom Wright, the Brumby. Going to ground there was Liotta. And use it now. Liotta then just going down before the 22, which means Nick White, if it goes out on the full, it's fine. And that's when he was going for a bit of distance, but of, uh, well, it's that man again. He defuses all the bombs that are going up today. Freddie Stewart does absolutely everything that a test fullback has to do. First rule, catch all your catches. 
have yet to see him drop one in a white jersey. Paper is playing an advantage to England. Here's Marcus Smith. Missing out Slade onto Farrell. Oh, and just almost getting in there was right. Number five, slowing ball down. Isaac Rodder, he's been penalised, slowing the ball down. But again, you've got Tom Curry running at the playmaker, James O'Connor. You don't want that to happen. You can see it's a ploy by England. But really, the backroom staff of uh, Australia, or Hooper in particular, needs just to pick it out. You don't want your 10 being run over time and time again. Because then you're on the back foot, that's when you give penalties away. Yeah, could you mark us halfway between? Oh, it's fine, player. And that's the result again, Martin. Ball pumped into the corner. Position territory from England. England forwards just uh, having a committee meeting. Here's Jamie George to think that uh, he wasn't even in the original England squad for this Autumn Nation series. Pulled up when Luke Cowan Dickey withdrew. Started against Tonga, scored a couple of tries, and here he is again. There's Ben Youngs to Alangi. Once more popping up there in one of the midfield channels. It's another penalty to England. With a brilliant line from Johnny May inside, which helped, held the Australian uh, defence. Hooper's just been told off for flying in off the feet. You're not allowed to do that. You're going to take all the all your weight with you. But again, it's literally all hands to the pump for Australia. As soon as England, watch this line from Johnny May. Ball yeah, zings out. You've got to control yourself when there you go. It's your left or right. He goes to Tulangi in the end. The but again, out. everyone has to stop May just in case he gets the inside ball. Ben Youngs, it was a beautiful pass from Curry. On to Ben Youngs, acting as the 10. Tulangi there, it'll take two or three people to stop him, and it's that go forward. And the referee's seen something. Quade Cooper gets hold of it, but it's, sorry, James O'Connor gets hold of it. Quade Cooper, he's in Australia. No, he's Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Not on tour. Good three points. The selection of Mano Tuolangi was the uh, source of many questions to Eddie Jones this week, but I think we've learned in the opening 17 minutes that whilst he wears a Wings jersey for the first time since England lost in Dunedin... Oh, dear! Well, that is what Eddie Jones will have feared, a ball going in the air to Tuolangi, and he's put it down. It's given a little opportunity oh, here. O'Connor just slips it through. May doing rather well in defence there. But that was always the concern about Tulangi on the wing. Youngs with the clearance. I was just about to say that uh, whilst Mana Tulangi on the wing was the source of many questions, really until that moment, Dowie, we had yet in the opening 18 and a half minutes of this match yet to see Tulangi perform any sort of typical wings role. Back three role, but I mean, he doesn't have to, because he's, he's, a, he's a 12, 13, he's a midfield back, so he doesn't have to do it. Australia would have seen that, so that's why they kicked to him. All smiles one minute, and then he's all skulls the next, because he doesn't take the ball. Powerful carry there from Valentini. Here's Liotta inside the 22. This is encouraging for the men in gold. Curly Beal floats it out, but just a little too far. For Michael Hooper, yeah. but England have you know, come offside. They have a penalty. I understand, but you had influence. Just listen to Farrell and Jakob yeah, so Piper is no Farrell, good. Well, but you I were understand. offside, but that's the Australian game. You offside. see that the, the two carrying, ball carrying, Pisami in the centre sets it up, and you've got Valentini, big lad, and Liotta. Just get it over the game line. The ball going wide, unfortunately, Beal forces it a bit. Hooper's come round onto the right wing. Marcus Smith in his eye line tries to go over the top really when he should have just kept it probably tucked it up the jumper take it into the little fly half but again England jumping out the line so there you go that's an easy three now for James O'Connor Curtly Bill one of the absentees through the early period of good Dave Rennie's tenure as the Australia coach, playing his club rugby these days yeah, in Paris for Racing 92. Pull them back. Both teams. Rory Arnold, another of those who 
return to the gold jersey after a couple of years away. So two from two so far from uh, James O'Connor, who, as we can see, is being already spilling blood for his country. Australia back within four, and it is as a consequence of English indiscipline. Well, possession is about 60 40, 60 to England at the moment. Because every time they almost do the right thing, when they go back at the other end and do the wrong, allow Australia back in. It's only Jones with 20 to, to talk about. But the first quarter navigated, I think it, it reflects both sides. England's intent is pretty good, the chasing is superb. And they've got that one back, that will please the coach. Little poke over the top. That gathered by Curtly Beale. Free ball. He calls the mark. I think it was a bit of a brain freeze from line. Ben Youngs. I'm not sure what he heard or what he was trying to do, but it was an awful kick. Well, he will have heard Yaku Paper saying he was playing an advantage. Okay. Perhaps he didn't realise it was only a knock-on advantage. Okay. I am just guessing, but uh, <laughs> there will be a lot of noise out enough, there. It's good enough for me. <laughs> Number two joining. You can take it again if you want. Scrum. Number Three two kick joining. Option. You can up. have a scrum, you can have a line up. Well, this will certainly numbers. be instructive, okay. Dowie, I because uh, we know that both sides in the week before this test match have lost two props. England without. They're two first-choice loose heads. That's why Bevan Rod was called up initially to the squad and then 24 hours ago given a debut as the starting loose head. As for Australia, well, they've lost both of their tight heads. Alan Alalatoa, he's unavailable. He would have uh, started here under normal circumstances. Also, Taniela Tupo, he was ruled out. James Slipper, who's played more than 100 times for his country, but operating on the tight head here for the first time, as you can see there, in nine years. Yeah, bit like my old mate Jason Leonard, wasn't it? He started loose and played tight. He could play anywhere, but Slipper, this will be a big test, this time, even with all that experience, not playing on that side until sort of... I'm sure he's, he's scrummed quite a bit. He's played for the Brumbries this season. And there straight away is a pen. And it's James Slipper who's penalised. And if you want to get bored for a good hour, get Jason Leonard to talk to you about the art of scrummaging loose and tight head, because there is a massive difference, so I'm told. There's a well-known place <laughs> in the uh, prop club. Petrus Duplessis, now the scrum coach for Australia. South Africa born. And played much of his career at no, Saracens. I think, I think that That's a very neat kick into the corner. I think he was slain with his left foot, wasn't he? As we see Slipper slipping. Sorry for the pun, but I'm not going to start to know exactly what goes on. But Jakob Piper, like he said, well, Eddie Jones said he's the best in the business. He's given England uh, a chance now again. They love these five metre line outs. The caught in drive against Tonga. This Australian outfit's a different class, though. The Twickenham Raw. The catch from Johnny Hill. Well defended at the moment by Australia. George has got it in his paw. Now they're with Ben Youngs. On to Farrell. Smith looping. Here's Henry Slade in space. So too Johnny May. The defence scrambling across. Curtly Beale, Andrew Kellaway get the wing into touch. Australia did very well there. They diffused that England line out. They hit him once, they pushed him to the touchline, they hit him again. And then they were forced him almost with Hooper's intervention to go wide. And really Slade tries to go out on the outside. He's never gonna never gonna do that, but Johnny May had no room really to, to attack that line at all. Good defense on both sides from Australia, one from the forwards and one from the back three. Well worked line out ball from the Wallabies. The catch from Liotta, the carry from Valentini, the penalty from Jakob Paper. That's a good D or defence 
from Australia again, diffusing the line out, coming across, stopping the try, and then getting the good exit. Martini, big ball carrier. That's what they need. These Australian back, give him the ball, get that yard two, three yards over the game, like woof, and away, away from White, and then they start to sing. As you can see from that graphic, Valentini, one of the regulars here, quickly taken. Heinger operating with Liotta. And it is Feinger, who's penalised, coming in from the side, getting off his feet. Well, he's a, walk, a walking penalty, isn't he, at the moment? He's just given two away. That's number six for Australia. Yeah, it is. Three to three to six, a half as many as England. see that now. And again, that just keep looking, no it, it, it means that Australia can't keep camped in, in England's half. Every time they do something good, they give a penalty away, and he'll know that. It's fine margins international rugby. England's always seem to be down this end, ball in hand, setting up camp. Once again, Farrell at first receiver, Smith looping round, and that ball went forward. All of their feet. Well, it's becoming a regular feature now to see Owen Farrell at first receiver, Marcus Smith looping round. I guess at some point, though, we will have to judge yeah, whether this is working or not. Taysami gives an absolute... That's fine, see, so he sits on his shoulder. The trouble is his chin has caught, Taysami's chin has caught Marcus Smith's shoulder. The thinking, well, the thinking is behind it, obviously, he's... he's, he's He's quicker than, than Farrell, he's fleet of foot, so if you can get him out the back and give him a yard of pace, he may be able to get round that defence and get over the edge, or get round the edge and bring the winger and fall back in. Um, but again, these guys know it, and that's why he's just off the line, forcing Marcus Smith to push the ball forward. Hey, Sam, he's a big hitter, we saw that up at Murrayfield last week, and uh, there's Scott Wisemantle. As mad as a cut snake, not my words, but those of Eddie Jones. And I think it's probably fair to say, because there is a serious talking point here, if we're looking for a creative force within the England coaching camp since Eddie Jones took charge, Dowie, Scott Wisemantle was he. He's now working with the Australians. I can't second-guess Eddie. We've had this conversation many times. I'm sure the 80-odd thousand people or rugby fans around the country or the world think the same. Um, you know, Eddie Jones isn't the easiest guy to work with. You know, that, that is a well-known thing. I'm not telling people things they don't know. So maybe Mantle said, no, I'm not working under that pressure. I want a free reign. Yeah, it was interesting to hear that uh, Scott Wise Mantle used to work on a sort of year-by-year -year basis with Eddie Jones. <laughs> Didn't really have a contract. They used to chat at the end of every year and eventually Wise Mantle decided after a decade away from home, because he also coached in France quite a bit, it was time to go back to Australia. Will he be the thorn in English flesh today? James O'Connor pumps it into the night sky. Freddie Stewart is caught, and that is certainly going to be a penalty. It'll Who knows, penalty. it may be more. Here's Marcus Smith. There's a loose pass, we come back, and I'm yeah, sure timing. there will be a discussion of some kind here. Just timing. Only, only just timing. Yep. Uh, brilliant referee and, and intervention touch judges. He, he has. He's just Stewart's got that ball. Easy. He's in the air. He's stupid. He's. Yeah. <laughs> just on the mark, it could have been worse. I mean, if Stewart had been closer to him, he could have gone in and flipped his legs up, and then he is in serious trouble. As it was, it was a clumsy mistiming effort. So, go back, take the penalty. No yellow, no red. The clipped South African tones you may well have heard in additions to Yako Papers were those of Stuart Berry, the television match official. Good start. But that's great communication, isn't it? You know, we don't stop for half an hour to have a look at the replays or whatever. Great, you know, bump, 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 straight away, off you go. Farrell again, on to Tom Curry. Dumped to the ground by the Wallabies captain. Oh, and he's through! And look at Jamie George! That was brilliantly timed, finding a huge hole in the defence. Quick thinking from the Wallabies, Fainga. Saw the ball was out, there was nothing wrong with that. But what a break from Jamie George. <laughs> Sprinting through, well, dare I say, 
a bit like Manu Tuolangi. Well, one of the reasons is, is Tom Curry's burst up the middle, not even Hooper, and that is just lovely. He knows nothing, he can't throw a ball left or right, he's got to take the contact. Australia do well, just scrambling back. It's Courtney Laws, Courtney Laws, he's playing second receiver out there. <laughs> get the lad, get off your left, go on, big fella. But again, he doesn't cough the ball up, unfortunately, someone else does. Oh. Well, I think Jaco Paper may well have seen this tackle here, okay. coming from Tom Wright. Now, look at this in a moment. There it is. It's shoulder, and it may well be to head. Well, we will listen in, because I fear this could be a red, because, again, he's not made notes. Is there a mitigation circumstance? Is he going down the England hooker? This could be a straight red. Well, he's that gone. was the man. I was just loving the sidestep off the left. See, at real time, it doesn't look bad. and slow time, it does. She's... See, the mitigation is, the only thing I will say on this is that actually Jamie George has gone in to force against that guy there because Tom Wright is almost stopped. Yes, he's hit him with the shoulder. Is that enough? I don't know. Yeah, so we're talking about level of danger here. The player is holding his ground. Do you believe it's high danger? No, I don't believe it's high danger. Yeah, me too, because he's, he's passive. He's, there he's, you go. He's, holding his, uh, he's not attacking the player. Late step. So he's gone. He's, he, off his left there. He has held... The crowd are booing, the crowd don't like it, but he's held his ground. Yes, he's made contact, but he hasn't deliberately. <laughs> he's off for 10, he's not off for the full game. Well, here comes Tom Wright. No, I don't need you. All right. Hang on, that's a line break, it's high speed. OK, the player changes his direction. But you stay up high, so you've, you're, you, you've done something wrong. Direct contact to head. We don't believe it's a high level of danger because you don't go forward, you hold, it, hold your, uh, your own. Therefore, it's just a yellow card. He shakes his head, but I'd take that. Jakob Piper says, I can bring a different colour out if you want, mate. Right, what a ten minutes we've got. Ten minutes before half-time, England have been brilliant so far in what they've executed and what they've tried to do, to what they've tried to bring... A different type of play into England. Jamie George will never make a break in an England shirt like that again. I'm sure Steve Thompson, the old England World Cup winning hooker, would have been will be ribbing him on Twitter or whatever they use these days. He'd have scored it, he'd be saying. Owen Farrell takes the three points. And now Australia have virtually an entire 10 minute period to weather the time between now and half time which could prove telling in terms of the outcome of the contest big 10 here and you can see straight away australia just walking up to the halfway line if i was jacob piper I'd say come on the crowd have paid good money to see this they're on the rack at the moment can england make them pay good to see jamie george in one piece The catch from Hill. Mall! It's inside the mall. Ben Youngs with a kick. Johnny May doing the juggling, but he went backwards. Youngs has another go. Here's Curly Bill. Solid take from the fullback. Jamie George on the left wing, first person up, catching, or chasing, I should say. Well, Maruitoji ripping the ball out of the hands of Gus Bell. Now there's some space here for Slade. Farrell. There's plenty of space there. Look at Curtly Bill getting across, but he won't be the first to it. Taisami missed it. Curry presents it. It's there for Underhill. Time to go wide again. Perhaps not, says Owen Farrell. You've got... There goes Carl Sinclair. 
Here's Smith. Relentless progress from the men in white. Well, Australia have done well to slow it down. Gives a chance for that defensive line to reorganise itself, but it is a man down, remember. Curry out wide, takes on Nick White. The tackle was high, so there's another penalty advantage. There's Bevan Rod. Youngs, Smith, onto a Toji, the ball's gone to ground. We come back for the penalty. I'll tell you what, there was a ruck over on that far side where Hooper comes in and tries to get the ball, and that, that was a yellow card because it was a professional foul. There's nothing wrong with that, really, is it? I mean, he's going down, it's the seatbelt type of tackle, but I think we've got to look at that. Farrell pump it in the corner here. Pump it in the corner. Another seven minutes to go to half time. There is Nick White. His tackle count every time he plays a test match is remarkably high. That time, though. It was an illegal one. Here's George. On to Atoji. The two Saracens. Youngs. Farrell. The grubber through men for Tuolangi. Tuolangi's gone to ground. Twickenham paying for a penalty. But Jaco Paper says not. One and four early. Although they are coming back for an earlier infringement. Well, England have reacted very speedily, too speedily, for the referee. <laughs> Even we couldn't keep up with that one. No. Jakob Piper's uh, just all smiles at the moment. The game is 100 miles an hour. One and four joined the line out too quick, so uh, there was always a penalty coming. They're back in the corner. That was good enough for me. The Brains Trust is working overtime. Mario Toja calls the line out, penalty so far, and that's what's killing Australia. They can't get territories. The pace of the game, it's the carrying of the England forwards. Ten against four. We've got Johnny this. Hill with a catch. There's Jamie George. It's been defended well at the moment. There's George again. He sees a gap. Oh, and the hookers lost it. It will be a goal line dropout. How close again was Jamie George? But it is that man, the scrum half, who saved the day for the men in gold. When you talk about, you talk about his tackling prowess, George Gregan esque. You remember George Gregan used to be a master of that back in the day. That is phenomenal, Jamie George. Two tries, <laughs> two tries last week in the 11 try route of Tonga. That's just brilliant defence. And I, I'm sure. White is giving uh, some in the ear of uh, Jamie George. And like he said, he's played in the Premiership. That could, well, I'm not saying keep Australia in the game, but with the ability to score a try like George should have done for England there, that game is going away from Australia with half-time coming. Well, there are a couple of England players down getting treatment at the moment. Jamie George is one of them. I think that's more ego than hurting his knee. Kevin Rod is also uh, having some attention to uh, looks rather like the head. He's getting uh, some strapping around. I'm just wondering uh, now, is Bevan Rod going off? I think he might be, actually. That is not Bevan Rod just coming out here to the touchline. Eddie Jones. Well, he's got a pretty decent record against the Wallabies, to say the least. 7-0 for Eddie Jones against uh, his former employers. Are you ready? Are you ready? You have to say he's looking like eight. Energised England is the goal line dropout. For those who don't know, it's one of the new laws. So you want to hoof this ball downtown as long as you can. It's got to go five metres, so you can't just chip it over that line. You've got to give it everything. There are five men in white waiting on the halfway line. That's a good kick. Here's Slate. To Alangi. The battering ram. Oh, 
Farrell. That one ricochets off a wallaby. Double knock on, first one of gold, second one of white. And it will be an England scrum. Chua Lange taking that ball in. Don't question everything. Again, the people saying that he's the fittest he's ever been or the best shape he's ever been. Got 14 on his back, but yeah, he's finished smiling. He loves doing that. Take that ball in at 12.13. That's what happens. Well, that's what I'd like to see him up more, but he's doing that today, even though he's got 14 on his back. Isaac Rudder was the man who <laughs> took him down, but he took an awfully long time to get up, did Isaac Rudder. Look at him. You may see him there in the uh, second row. No, no. Back there. Well, you, I don't Just think rearranging you, his parting, I think you he would, is there. You wouldn't want to find fancy tackling a, an unfit to a Lange, I know that is. But an absolutely raring to go one. He's been frustrated. But again, credit to all the guys at Patel. Got him absolutely spot on. Now, this is a lovely opportunity for Scrum Half. Carry it uh, at eight. Will they fancy going? Eight, nine. Marcus Smith is behind, straight behind, so he could loop around as well. Stewart is behind him. Any movement on your side? Well, Australia have been stretched, they've been battered over the course of the last seven minutes, but apart from that first penalty, they have not conceded any points during this Simbin period. Three minutes to go on the, on the Simbin, well, we've got about three minutes in this half, that's not a bad time to score. It's never a bad time to score. Well, that is one for that Wallabies pack. Very good. <laughs> he's still got it, even though he's on the tight head side, Mr. Slipper, sir. 113th cap. Not bad. Do you know how many test tries he's got? Go on. Just one. <laughs> Against Uruguay. That's under good. the roof that's, at the World Cup. That's what prop, yeah, you don't want them scoring in tries, mate. Up. You want them doing this, you want them winning penalties. When England thought they had it, right, okay, we're going to go a night, you know, eight, nine, go up that right hand side. No, they're not. Slipper had any other ideas, he knows. Take that clock down, don't leak any more points. It's just a seven pointer, converted try gets you level. And that's how you play, you play in quarters, you play in positions on the field. And now don't make a mistake, Australia. Follow Fainga. Finds the big fella Arnold. Play advantage offside, back line. Paisami taking the ball up. England have come offside. I'll just take a three here. Well, Curly Peel wants to hurry, but I think somebody <laughs> has maybe had a little word from over his shoulder and said, hang on. There's a chance here to tie things up in the Simbin period, and that psychologically would be a major, major boost for the men in gold. You're right. You can change if you want. You go in just right. four points What's down. What are you doing? And that's yeah, the pick. first time I think Pesami, Ikatawi, as, as a combination, really had the ball to take in off a line out. They did so well at, at Scotland carrying the ball. Number, uh, He's hurt ball himself, but I don't think he'll go off. They're very sort of the similar type of players, but again, yeah, that's what Australia need. Not only their back row to carry, but these two in the midfield. Oh, number two bailing out. No, two. So it's Lenny Ikitao who's uh, taken the knock here. Nikitao, who, in the midfield, line. without his mate uh, Samu Karevi, on this to tour of Europe. And to Paisam, he's had to occupy the role that Karevi has done so well during the rugby championship period. There will be a restart. Particularly in those back-to-back -back wins against South Africa, they really were huge for okay. Australian rugby. Okay. They followed that up with two wins against Argentina. For the yellow. It was disappointing last week up at uh, Murrayfield, defeat against Scotland. But how much it would mean to get a result here at Twickenham. James O'Connor. Three penalty successes, and now it's four. And back comes Tom Wright. So, three points each during the Simbin period. A psychological boost for Australia. I think it's a psychological boost, is a tick for Australia. Uh, I know who the, the 
the happier coach will be Dave Rennie as he walks down there just uh, four points in it and really England you've got to say about all the possession they've outplayed Nick White in the thick of things you know, stopping that try from Genge and here we go half time all a bit scrappy and messy there but it was Rob Liotta who side footed it into touch 40 minutes gone Dave Rennie perhaps the happier of the two coaches but it is England who lead at halfway at Twickenham. It's 16 points to 12. Twickenham at half time, England leading Australia by 16 points to 12. So England have the lead, Dowie. Do you have a sense that maybe Australia just hanging on a little bit? They're hanging on a bit, they had a yellow card. Um, but they just, I think all that experience of playing those test matches, what, three against France, three against New Zealand, two against South Africa, Japan and Scotland, that'll help them. But again, the big problem is missed tackles. They don't normally miss counts two to ten in favour of England. England only missed two, carries 39 to England, 23. It's the metres made, 199 to 97 and the pens, six to ten. So basically, it's all England doing the good stuff, all Australia doing the bad stuff, but there's only four points between them. So Rennie will be happy, Eddie Jones will be pulling what hair he's got left out but we'll see so England making an alteration at half time Jamie Blamire is on so that knock that Jamie George picked up when he came so close to scoring a try means that he's had to leave us early here's Tom Curry Blamire has got an outstanding scoring record he scored with his first touch as a test player during the summer against the United States he then scored a hat-trick against Canada he was on the score sheet again last week against Tonga. Here's Kellaway. Also, no stranger to scoring tries. Kellaway. O'Connor. Henry Slade, who's almost occupying in defence the right flank. The one which numerically you'd expect uh, Manatua Lange to be occupying, but that's not the way. There's Bevan Rod. Penalty against England. First action off. Again, Eddie Jones will be livid. White's not going to take this quick. This is going to go through, sail through the posts the way that um, James O'Connor, and that's straight from the start. It's not Bevan Rod doing the wrong thing, it's Mario Tojo. That's the penalty. He's gone straight off his feet. Well, he was supporting his own weight, but well, the referee has seen something different. Of the ball. Yeah, hands in front of the ball, so he wasn't absolutely precise. And because he was isolated, it was so exposed to the referee. And that is a simple three points. One minute, 30 odd on the clock. And Australia <laughs> could be one point behind it. One point behind England. And it's Maru Atoji who uh, Eddie Jones did name as maybe one or two players in this England side at the moment who would make a World 15. The other. Tom Curry, but Atoji, perhaps noticeable in his absence from the new leadership team. One of the newspapers in the UK flippantly referenced uh, Atoji's absence from that group last week when he, when the paper pointed out the only ambassadorial role at the moment that Atoji has is as the face of the autumn and winter menswear range of a famous British retailer. Slightly unkind. Anyway. Back to matters here. James O'Connor. Did I think so far? Yep. He well, maintains that record. Already written it down there. Happy bunch there, aren't they? They're going to come on at some point. Big Will Skelton's there. Rowling takes a sip. I don't think you can quite believe he's just one point behind now. We're talking about a Toja. Look, you know, that's a little bit harsh. He's a superb world class player, but he does give penalties away. Tom Wright. Once again, Courtney Laws was straight up there. Slipper. Oh, that was an awkward one. James O'Connor balanced it on the end of his fingers and uh, knocked it backwards. Yes, backwards play on. Thank you. And there's Nick White. They're going to live or die by the sword, Australia. Right from the first kickoff, they did exactly almost the same. Running out deep out of their 22, gaining ground. That time, Slipper wasn't really up to speed. I think they were lucky not to get a bait away with that, but uh, in the end, White cleared. Blameyer, that wasn't straight. 
first row and uh, Jakob Paper. A little bit slow on the whistle. That's it on. Not the start he was looking for. Line out try scorer last week, and again that's his first line out. And it ain't straight, he's on for Jamie George, who hurt himself with yeah. that unbelievable. It's worth watching again. Tackle by Nick White, the scrum after he's lodged the ball. Line out taken. But again, that's two easy ins, isn't it? One for the penalty for Australia, and then just basically you've got a bit of position. They make a mistake, you put a bit of pressure on, and don't capitalise. The ball goes out for White. Um, the result, line out. They opt, sorry, Martin, they've opted for another line out, so they could go for a scrum. Line out it is. So 16 points to 15. They go short to Liotta. They've tried that one already and got away with it this afternoon. Now for a second time. Here's Nick White. His stock really is rising at the moment, Nick White. He wasn't even uh, the starting nine for Australia in the early stages of the rugby championship. Well, Kellaway knocked it back straight into the grasp of Atoji. Here's Youngs. End over end. Curtly Beale scuttles across, but it finds touch. A good probing little kick again, but again, our England go ask. Australia many questions in the lineup. They've got a pretty good lineup, functioning lineup. Just make sure when you want to charge um, But that's where Atoji just stands up and slightly different than any second row. He knew if that ball goes in the air, he gets tapped back from Australia. So he just steps in the way, picks the ball up, gets England possession. Youngs pops it up to the 22. Might have caught a glimpse there of Pierre Brousset. There he is, the French assistant referee. Sam Underhill has uh, clearly picked up an abrasion on the top of his head, needs that uh, patching up. Well, he took a, a knock against Tonga, didn't he, when he hurt his shoulder, it looked like, or was it a stinger? Obviously, it hasn't stopped him playing, because that's why he's out there. He'll be on again as the Australian bench are looking on. They look a little bit more, I wouldn't say downcast, worried, I think, is the word. Interesting configuration on the bench today for England. They've got two uh, players who many people believe there's one of them who've been vying for the eight jersey. That's uh, Sam Simmons, who, if he comes off the bench, will make his first test appearance for England for more than three years. Well, they have been banging on the door, but that guy hasn't been opening the door. They are the best two number eights. I have been over a period of time, but he seems to think not. But they're on the bench, so hopefully, hopefully we'll see them. Oh, it's been lost. Here comes Johnny Hill. Oh, and look at the drive here from England, it's over the line. And Jaco Pfeiffer says it's held up. Oh, he's done such good work there, but the result of that is the new rule. This is going to be kicked out from underneath the poster, from wherever they want to. That was a brilliant charge from Johnny Hill. The forward's got to help him out, but the result isn't the five-metre scrum as it would have been. That's what happens, Australia didn't get hold of that ball correctly. And off the big fella went. Okay. Nick White is ever is the first person in. They're trying to hold him up. He gets over the line. He can't see whether he's grounded that. He hasn't. He's on his back. And the result is this kickoff. Yes, Rory Arnold and Michael Who for all fingers and thumbs over that one. That's where it pops up for Johnny Hill. Toji right at the heart of things again, allowing Arnold to get up there. And as he comes down, he just rolls him over on his back. There goes to Alangi. The needle on the Richter scale just wobbles. Curry, Smith, Farrell, Underhill. Liotta over the ball, couldn't get hold of it. There goes Sinclair. No, 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 it's off the foot. Inside, sir. Atoji. The tackle from Slipper. It's there for the England scrum half. Smith at first pivot. And that was on the Courtney Laws. It was. Man handled by Isaac Rodder, Curry, oh! That looked a little bit high from Liotta. It is a penalty advantage. Big hit on Courtney Laws. Well, there's a penalty coming, in fact, two now for England. Oh, and through goes Stewart. On here to Atoji. Slade presents it. Youngs, change of direction. They're still playing a penalty advantage. Marcus Smith onto Underhill. England within four metres. Youngs, well, he runs into Jakob Paper. 
And the arm is out once again from the South African referee. It's still a penalty advantage. Marcus Smith, and after it goes Slade, but it is Wright who gets it first. All right, time for a cup of tea. Yaku, we have a TMO check, check. We're going to check that tackle. So, Yaku, I've got a dangerous tackle from it's goal number one that I would like to put up back, the screen for you. Okay, so Stu, leading into this tackle, we're on advantage already. Correct, so we have a penalty only advantage for a seatbelt tackle originally, and then we have a tip tackle which comes from number one gold. All right, so he loves him. It's Gus and Bell, and it's that it's second no, tackle no, here on Courtney Laws. Well, Gus Bell goes forward through, you're not allowed to get the legs up above, above the horizontal. He's got one up there, and it comes down on his arm. So that's gold with his left hand grips onto the leg and tips him beyond the horizontal and does not turn him down and does not return him in a safe manner. That'll be a yellow. You're hearing this, the crowd can see this on the big screen as well. That's correct, yeah, that's a yellow. Okay, it's number one gold. Correct, number one gold, yellow card, number one. dangerous tackle. Number one. Well, as if the Wallabies don't have enough problems in the front row. Listen, pass is gone, it's light. Then you lift them beyond the horizontal. It's yellow. <laughs> Everybody tries to have a word to the ref. It is 10 metres out for the 22, and 5 metres out for the 15. So England knocking at the door. Rennie looks on, there's two guys in the bin. It was uh, Tom Wright in the first oh, half, and now the big prop in the second. And Farrell will calm things down. Alex Dombrandt is coming on. At the moment, it's only a, uh, a temporary change. Sam Underhill no, is going on for a head injury assessment, so he may be back. The one thing that is for certain is that Australia are down to 14 for another period of 10 minutes. England couldn't take advantage when Tom Wright was uh, sat in the bin. Can they do it now with Australia a loose head drop down? It will be interesting to see how uh, Australia choose to fill the gap here. Will they move Slipper over to loose head and give Ollie Hoskins his formal test debut? Meanwhile, from straight in front, Owen Farrell re-establishes that four-point advantage which England had at half time. Well, you'll have the Harlequins access back. Tom Brown at eight, you've got Smith. They like to combine for Harlequins at ten. Curry can go back to his normal position at seven. So whether that will just jigger it but England to do better, we will have to see. Again, they're doing so much good and then just letting themselves down, so... 30 minutes to go. No hands! No hands! Go ready on. It's, it's outside. Referee just confirming the fact that that ball's now been taken back into the 22, so they can't go directly for touch. Hurley Beal is under it. And is then ushered into touch by Johnny Murray. And that's what you call a fantastic box kick, and that's a great the exit. Point, if it's clearly out. The kick is only as good as its chase, and Johnny May, again, I'll give you one of the best in the business, doesn't Shall overrun it, doesn't numbers? overface it, doesn't jump into Kirkley Billy, waits for the guy to take it, and then bundles him to touch. Net gain, 30 metres for England. Come in. Well, will uh, Jamie Blamire hit the dartboard this time? Simply just going over it. Just making sure he knows the actual call. There you That's go. a little better. Like, jumping across five and a late sack. Another sack advantage being played here right. against Australia. That is a 12th across, penalty they've conceded. The five gold. Five gold jumping across. That one against Isaac Rodder. <laughs> that fella. That's Rory Arnold. Can't jump across the guy. 
You see, it's just you just driven into there. It's, it's it's a mistake, really, more than a, de a deliberate play. The Yaka Piper is in there. You can see that Ben Youngs wasn't going to get that ball out of the scrum. He wanted the penalty. He wanted the, the kickers to push him into the 22. And that's exactly what's happened. It gives England just the field position they're looking for. Carl Sinclair just uh, reinforcing the line-out call. Putting his new hooker at ease, but it's not worked, and away comes the Wallabies captain. Well, England were appealing for it, and Jakub Paper has answered in their favour. This Mara Toja, Toja, he's again, he's <laughs> he's the all-round guy. Unfortunately, Lamaya misses his thrower. And Hooper, we haven't seen him carry, but again, look at the isolation. It's one, two, three seconds too long. People are over top of the ball. I think it was a Toje, it's a Curry. There's two great fetches. Between them, England win that turnover. And when you just went and thought of Australia, it's going to relieve the pressure and give that guy another three points. That, the 13th penalty. Well, 13 penalties after 52 minutes. That will be ugly reading for Dave Rennie. It will, and that's why the possession stats are so high in England's favour, 66 to, to 34, because those penalties just enable England to go kicking into their half, Australian half, and then giving a penalty away. This guy, I think he scored more points against Australia than any other teams at something like that. He's pretty good. Yes, came into the match with 156 points against Australia. Well, he's pulled that one wide. A rare miss. But his own very lofty standards, that was quite a bad one. I scribbled that off, so I wrote it down. That is a bad miss for him. Fallible, but now Australia still in the hunt. Just four points in it. They've still got a guy in the sim bin. I don't know how long that is, but about another six Five minutes. Six, they've yeah. got. Here we go. Go on, fella. Don Brand on there to two Alengi at pace. Great hands back to Don Brand. What a tackle that was from Curly Beal. Well, the Wallabies keep on scrapping. Here's Paisami, bursting through. What a break there from the centre. He's still going. Paisami, that was fantastic. There goes Iketel. Don't look, oh, and he's been dispossessed. And it's Blamaya who has it. Well, Hooper was talking there to the referee, and the chip ahead there from Ikitel, and back goes Marcus Smith. It's all happening at Twickenham. Well, it is. Hooper's hobbling down there. He's gone on, down on his haunches. He may have a bit of a uh, bit of cramp, and the Australian defence may have a bit of a cramp watching that back again. Don Brandt does that time and time again for Harlequins. Big carry up the middle. Superb ball support. Unfortunately, <laughs> a bit like Hooper when he made a break out of his 22. He's run away from. Uh, support and if you're a second late you've got to get there within two seconds you're going to lose that ball this is Pasami again there's been little or often of him coming through the line but that's what he can do that's what he can show just runs out of a bit of support Farrell's too high again but you can see how dangerous Australia are when they stay in this game there's only four points in it give these boys a bit of go forward a combination he has to be going off shortly. <laughs> I think he's just saying who's going to be skipper. Well, just demonstrating there what happened. <laughs> Looks like a foot injury. On comes Pete Samu. So Australia down to 14 temporarily. And now lost their talent. 
Will you protect the ball there? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, we'll straight on. So, Dowie, a chance to catch breath for a moment. When you consider that they've now spent, what, 15 minutes of the match down to 14 men. Four. Australia have soaked up so much pressure. How much more can they cope with? Mate, they'll cope with anything as long as it's... <laughs> See there. And they're giving away throws now, but, I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll put up with whatever it takes because they're still in the game. You know, convert well, just a try we put them ahead. Neat little pass that was from Bev and Rod. Henry Slade just couldn't get it away quickly enough. Here's Marcus Smith. And Smith taken into touch by Kirtley Beale. And, well, Owen Farrell, just for a moment, perhaps losing his head. Well, Owen Farrell's certainly seen something he didn't like. I think Kirtley Beale just uh, put his hand... Give him a little Just pat on the it's head. Not a knock on. Confirm it's okay. off the head and shoulder, not off the arm. We've checked it, it's off the head, it's not a knock on. He's saying the ball, yeah, saying the, the ball, ball went off lovely. the head, it's not a knock on. Bevan. So it's their balls. Thank you. It's lovely out the back, chicken wing pass. Marcus Smith, as ever, trying to hold defences. It's all fine, nice to live. O'Connor, the carry from Valentini, and another three minutes of the Simbi. And once again, Australia have managed it so well. Arnold, tallest man on the pitch. The former Exeter chief, Nick White. He's in no hurry at all. On there to slipper. Good work. And use it. We are being told that Sam Underhill is on his way back. He's passed his head injury assessment. Slade didn't get to it. Eventually, Johnny Hill has it. Into the final minute of the Simbin period. And this will suit Australia with that, just that minute to go. The back up to 15 then. They want to keep England down. They don't want any big breaks at the midfield. Oh, even better. Penalty. Restarted and rolled again. Moving. <sighs> it is harsh because you get different interpre interpretations from certain refs. It's just saying Courtney Laws goes in there, he's in the downward position, so that's okay. Presents the ball, and he's not held really. He's, he's get penalised for getting up and going that extra two foot. Uh, small margins. We need to take a look at this, please. Oh, I say, there could be a twist in the tail here. I think they're looking at the tackle now on Courtney Laws. We have an item of foul play. It's a seatbelt tackle. Um, it's nothing more than a penalty, but I do want to put it onto screen because it does mean a penalty turn off. OK, so it's just, just a seatbelt. It's a seat belt if, if that. I mean, correct. So we do have foul play. Very consistent It's the involvement here of Pete Samu, who's only been on a couple of moments. Is that, is that really dangerous? You know, England now got a get out of jail card. They've got a pen. There's no way that that's a yellow card. The crowd behind us have got calling for it. That guy, I'm sure, can't believe it. I know rules are rules, but... England 20. It's a physical sport. So here is Sam Underhill. He's back. Well, it's been a cameo, but it's been quite an impressive one from Alex Dombra. Well, it has. He's had one carry and made 25 metres. There you go. That's not bad. Oh, the touch is missed. Curtly Bale goes long as far as he can find. Here's Henry Slade, who's uh, had rather that roving brief today. Pass play. Straight down the throat of O'Connor's off and running. Oh, and that would have been an opportunity for Tom Wright. 
but he let it slip through his fingers. Well, again, that's the, the danger of James O'Connor. He just saw that the actual England chase was an epi. He attracts two players, and right, really, look at it, his eyes there, as he's looking, he's passing that ball, he should take it. It's not the greatest of passes, but a, an international winger of his calibre, he knows. You were outside Johnny Hill, you were down the touchline then. And that's all it takes, one moment of brilliance. Well, now Australia have got to make a plan now. They have to bring someone off and take... Oh, no, he's back, in fact. He's yeah. here. He's returned as Gus Bell. So they've weathered it again pretty pretty good from Australia. Now we're nearly going into the last 20. England haven't been able, with all that possession, 64% to 36 possession, with all that possession, they haven't been able to put Australia away, and that's exactly what you want as a touring side coming to a place like Twickenham. The coaching team now said, right, we'll believe. Just keep pressure on. And they're trying to. The view from over the shoulder there of Peter Stuplessy. Keep that left side strong. I'm going to ask him to keep that left side strong and you stay on the square angle. Okay. Scrum coach. Okay. And there is James Slipper. Wearing three on his back in a gold jersey for the first time in nine years. He finished off last week's game effectively wearing number three. After uh, both Alan Alalatoa and uh, the replacement tight head went off. What a moment, that for the men in gold. Well, again, Sinclair came out before, everyone saw that he went to have a word with the, with the touch judge, as I call him, match official, whatever, touch judge, um, to, to bemoan something. The trouble is, what, what happens is that he doesn't buy anything by that. Courtney Law saw it, Tuplicy loves that in the middle, they've won that. As I said, this game's on a knife edge, this ball goes in the corner, they score, as in Australia, we have then got a very, very interesting 20 minutes. Richard Cockrell looks on. Well, part of the Pony War rhetoric during the week was Eddie Jones saying that the Australians tend to have an inferiority complex whenever they're in, in the presence of Englishmen. <laughs> that was denied by Michael Hooper, as you might... Oh, dear. An unforced error from Falao Fainga. He hasn't covered himself in glory as the Aussie hooker. Unfortunately, he made a few penalties, and that really is unacceptable at this level. And maybe that's the pressure again, Mario Toji and the boys put on in, that, uh, in the lineup. Curly Beale, no problems underneath that. That's exactly why Curly Beale was brought into this team. Given the 15 jersey today, here's Nick White. That's rather better from right. Isami. Oh, and Curly Beale had to reach for that and it's gone forward. It's just when Australia need a step up and find another gear. They're making some fairly silly little errors. Oh, the hand in this game to England. With that sort of no throw for Fayinga. And then. But that's the way Australia is not the greatest of pass, but Beale takes those <laughs> 99 times out of 100. It's lucky for England, it was just that one one time and he didn't. And they're off down that, that right wing, they put the boot on it, they get down to England's 10-metre line camp down there, and the clock's ticking down. Now there is a big felt. No, I don't think they'll be going back in the scrum once, uh, once he comes on. Big Will Skelton, the former Saracen, now playing his club rugby on the Atlantic coast in France with La Rochelle. What's his official weight? Someone talk, please. Yeah, much better. Yeah. No one, no one claims certain, certain weights with your underweight or overweight. I've got 140 kgs down. 
Which in old money is what, Martin? <laughs> I'll leave you to do that. I'm just going to tell you who that fella is in the middle. <laughs> one of the greats, uh, John Eels. Nicknamed nobody from his uh, teammates because nobody's perfect. Penalty kicking, drop goal kicking, conversion kicking, and not bad for a scrum uh, for, a <laughs> for a second row. Unbelievable. The skeleton knows he's got an interesting 18 minutes, a match-defying 18 minutes. If he can get his paws on that ball, well, they've got to sort this scrum out. They've got a penalty off the last one. The Wallabies looking for another big eight-man effort. This time the arm is out in England's favour. Youngs. There goes Underhill. And he was met by Liotta. Sinclair, good hands there from the Bristol tight head. Oh, and right taken in the air. That was the appeal, Kirtley Beals talking to the assistant referee. Meanwhile, the referee is coming over for the first penalty. Right, that's, te that's technical. We'll stay with this one. We'll stay square. I'll come to you. Yeah, it was a I'll good... come to you next round. The pen's coming there on a free play. I'll find you, please. Sinclair doesn't fancy running it too much. I'll find you now. Marcus Smith goes for the kick pass. The result, exactly what England wanted. A chance for another three, just calm things down. Well, Alex Dombrandt and Sam Underhill about to we can have enough. pass again, moving in opposite directions through the rotating door. Underhill going off. Dombrandt back on. Chance here for Owen Farrell to atone for that last miss. The England lead is seven. It was just a blip last time. Normal service resumed with Farrell. Australia throw the dice here, but again, this just seven points, as you said, Martin. Converted try gets them equal. 15 minutes to go, all to play for. Tolu Latu is on, the Stade Francais hooker. He replaces Polo Fainga. Curry with a catch. Oh, and there is straight into the action Latu with that tackle. We've got no hands. No word at the moment from the television match official. Yes. Lemire presents yes. it. Don't pull Don't pull him. No. The Australians have soaked up an awful lot of pressure. In uh, pugilistic terms, they've had to take quite a few punches, not too many on the chin. But they're sensing here, they may well have a chance. Seven straight wins for England against Australia. Oh, and Isaac Rod has left the ball behind and it's gone forward. And just that little bit of accuracy you need at times like this at the moment. Proving elusive for the Wallabies. It's the accuracy and the precision that are the hallmarks of Australia and definitely the black back play. Beale knows that he dropped one before. They're just making too many mistakes. They're trying to stretch England, which is good, and it's the way to play against England, to get them scrambling back. But unfortunately, they've just dropped too many passes, which lets let England back into the game, and the huddle happens, and Richard Cockle gets on a few words, left, right, and centre. This is going to happen. We want this to happen. And they've been starved of the ball anyway with all the penalties they've been giving away, and when they've had a chance, which is a good option, there's no problem with this, Beale goes. Johnny Hill knows that's out, okay. After we've checked that and off. There's a clear red on the it's just that. Yeah. This is what they wanted more people running at Marcus Smith. He's not the biggest tackler, obviously, but he's after this. Oh, we're done. Hello, in 
Farrell just getting back to his feet. He's limping quite heavily as uh, Tom Wright goes off. He's replaced by Easy Paresi. He's got some lightning feet. Great name as well. But I don't see the point of Farrell if he's hobbling as badly as he is. What's the point of him staying on? You've got options. Rafi Kirk can possibly do a job on the wing and move somebody inside. You've got Max Malins who, who could do a job, but a hobbling Farrell isn't going to do a job. Well, let's see how the England captain goes. He'll be uh, not literally, but will need, metaphorically speaking, dragging off the pitch. That's uh, that's his personality. Pat. Penalty advantage to England. Now it's all about taking the clock down. I know it's 14 minutes. Taking the clock down, i.e. get in their half, Australia's half, stay there. Make them make the mistakes. Well set scrum. Call's gone up, and then boom, power comes on. Australia have got to wheel it round. They can't handle the power. There you go. Here's the engine room. They know. That's the game. We're inside of the last ten minutes of the match. Big moment for the Wallabies. He's been in tears during the players' meeting in the week when they announced the team. He was in tears during the anthems. On comes Ollie Hoskins. This time last week, he was celebrating being part of a London Irish team that had come back from 26 points down to draw at Saracens. Had no idea this is where he would be the following week. Ollie Hoskins, who's... Uh, well, his father, we believe, is here. And Ollie Hoskins' father, historically, has been an England fan because he is an Englishman. Arrived at Heathrow at six o'clock this morning. And Farrell goes off. On comes Max Malin. So, in a funny sort of way, I think this line up in the back line for England is going to set up rather like many critics believe it perhaps could or should have been from the first whistle. Tulangi will move back into his familiar midfield role. Malin's almost certainly to the wing. The counter ruck from the Wallabies, outstanding, and then uh, the hand there of Courtney Laws playing the ball when he shouldn't have been. It's a penalty to Australia. Mate, it's something they've done absolutely superb. I think they won three or maybe four. Courtney Laws, we're hearing, is captain, but again, they would not be happy with that. And that's the problem. Again, Australia just find a way. They're only seven points behind. We're talking about Ollie Hoskins, he could be part of a, a great win here. He's got his job to do, which is in the scrum first. But again, keep your heads. This is good initially by Ollie Hoskins. He's in there holding the ball up. Courtney Laws knows that. As soon as he puts his knee on the floor, that becomes a wreck. And then straight away, the rest of the Aussie pack get behind. They win the penalty. They pump it down to the 22. This is Nova by a long way. 25 wins apiece. Australia and England. One draw back in 1997. Latu, and look at Johnny Hill, was up there to poach it. Just got a big extra pour to it. He telegraphed a bit, Johnny Hill, all that reach and length of arms and legs, he just got in there and tipped it over England's side. There goes Kurt, um, Kurtley Beale. Oh, and then there's an England foot, Tom Curry. Doing his bit for England. Youngs. O'Connor underneath it. Malian's in pursuit. He couldn't find green grass. Just Freddie Sherd. Bill with a catch. The challenge well timed that time from Stewart. Here's Nick White. Will Skelton. Carries it up into his old mate from Saracens, Maro Itoji. We are inside the last ten that. minutes of the match. England have been really tested here. A 
Another one for Stewart. That was Johnny Murray. That's the halfway line. Devin Rod getting knocked back. His leg was taken out by the tackle. Long wait there for Beal again. Obstructed. Gold, gold, gold. Nine gold obstruction. Nine gold obstruction. <laughs> Nick White right penalised for obstructing. It's going to be a penalty. And who knows? Watch out for what. He does, he goes straight in front of Max Malins there. He doesn't have to do it. I think that's three times we've seen that. It was two against Tonga. It doesn't matter shaking your head, you know what you're doing. Total penalties, and that's what's killed Australia today, 17. He'll be lucky in a minute. You just watch, he's coming in, you can see Malins, he just runs in there. So it doesn't matter, he doesn't do it badly. He tries to disguise it, but unfortunately, he don't do it. Beal had plenty of time. Send the players. Do you happy with that? Yes, Jacob. Clear change of line by nine. And England debutants on the pitch. Rafi Quirk of Sale replaces Ben Youngs. Also on Trevor Davison. He will replace Bevan Rod. And also there Will Stewart. So two alterations being made in the front row. One and nine. Well, I'll put my neck on the block here as Marcus Smith Thank you. puts the ball on the tee. This could be the game because Australia will have to score twice. Not only a converted try to get up there. Right. Time's back on. This is Sorry. a pressure kick from Marcus Smith, but that's what he'll be judged on when he eventually takes over the mantle as the, the number one in England, which I think he probably will. He's uh, very good feet work, but again. It's a percentage in front of the poles, and it's a pretty, it's a very easy kick in a sense, but no kick is easy when there's this much pressure on you. It's a relatively small sample, but thus far, his kicking record at test level, very good, 86%. No mistake that time either. A degree of comfort for the men in white. It is ten points, that's what you want. That little buffer at eight minutes, can Australia score twice? They're capable, huh? but they've made so many handling errors. Um, well, I doubt it, they probably can't string, string the passes together. The Wallabies know they have to score next and do it reasonably quickly. Here's Bill. On to O'Connor, who is now the captain on the field. That was Ikitao with the step. On the ball. Rafi Quirk makes his first contribution. Away there! There's the ball. He's done well there. He's the sales scrum half. His first kick was outstanding up to the halfway line. And if he gets a chance to make a break, and he's heavily strapped with that right, right knee, he's as quick as lightning. Beal to O'Connor again. It'll chip ahead. It was the Back collision. The Kellaway just got his hands to it, but I think it went forward, and that's gone directly into touch. I think that's about his first mistake. <whistles> Freddie Stewart, again, just ball in hand. You can see him talking to himself here. If all he needed to do was just move that to the left, and England were trotting at the touchline. And then put a grubber through and still play the territory game. Well, the Wallabies will need another captain on the field because James O'Connor has been replaced by Noah Lolasio. And an alteration being made in the boiler house for England. Charlie Yules of Bath replaces Exeter's Johnny Hill. There 
is Charlie Yules. Latu. Water did well to grab that. Here's the carry coming from Valentini. I don't see it there, knock on. Look backwards. Leave it now! There's McDermott, who we're told is the new captain for Australia. That's Icky Tao. They've done rather well here. Paisami and Icky Tao, the two centres. That was grabbed by Lovasio. It's then first one's off stolen white. by England, but England responsible for a first knock-on, so white. it will Second be a scrum and a Wallabies ball. I've got to say, I've never seen the Wallabies drop so many passes, England's make six. so many errors, and simple balls carrying around the, around the corner. Oh, we've got another problem six, Thank you. And Again, there's been no rain, it's very good conditions, it's incredibly mild here, it's just one of those days they've had. England had a very good start, but um, they've made mistakes. The captain goes off. This, uh, Owen Farrell's gone off. I don't know who's captain now. So, Sam Simmons wearing white for the first time in almost three and a half years. Patience. Tom Curry's captain, I've just been hearing. And we've got three number eights out there. Well, I don't class, actually, Tom Curry's number eight, but Eddie Jones does. Those two are definitely... And they've been outstanding in the Premiership. And they need to close the game off now. Five minutes to go. Brooks. Bond. Set. Yes, sir. That's awesome. I can see the slip. I can see the slip yet. Yeah. That will suit England. As, again, it's just the clock keeps ticking when the scrum goes down and England want to take another minute. We lose so much time in this facet of play. From him. Strong left side. Both of them something to work on. There is Tate McDermott, the Queensland red. Fair ball, so in the hole. No head. McDermott started all three test matches against New Zealand earlier this year. Before Nick White was uh, handed the nine jersey. Crouch! Not stable. Too much movement. Australia get the free kick. Quickly taken by Vanatini. There's uh, McDermott. Oh, and uh, what happened there for Curly oh, Beal? And I'm afraid that uh, Lenny Tao was in front of him. Start the car. Beal, again, a majestic player playing out the back door. What's doing? McDermott, and I don't know what he's trying to do. She's trying to chip it through, but it's gone scrambled. Scrambled it's eggs everywhere. Scrambled eggs in the midfield, dropping balls all over the place. Not Australia today. Oh, with a reference to uh, the uh, brand name on the front of the Australia jerseys, it's not so much scrambled eggs as scrambled cream eggs. <laughs> like it. We are coming into Christmas, though. I think, in all fairness, there haven't been too many soft centres, though, in Australia today. They've hung on well, haven't they? Well, they're not... So I know exactly what you mean, but they're not soft. They just haven't had the ball. I mean, how many times have you seen those two just bust the ball off of a line-out? They haven't. There's the man of the match, Freddie Stewart, and I can't disagree with that. He is outstanding in the air. He's... Uh, I think he's got it all. Big, tall, rangy guy, and you need that command of the airways at the back. Um, you need that safety net, and he definitely gives England that. When that ball goes up in the air, they just think, right, let's just get back and help him out, he's going to catch it. One. Well, certainly, those two and test matches in the again. summer against the United States and Canada have uh, been very useful for Eddie Jones. He's found himself a new goalkeeper, a fullback, and there he is, Stewart, releasing Malins. The tackle coming from Taysami. There's a Toji. Smith, Henry Slay just drift it, drifting across field. <sighs> it's then lost forward. Curly Beal knows he's got to create something here. It's Baysami, little dummy. He's got McDermott alongside him, and McDermott has spilt it. No advantage. I think both sides' skill pitches. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> There's the. I think they'll have a. 
for work, extra time for the games coming up. Freddie Stewart's just been told he is man of the match for the crowd, and they do agree. Slade was just yeah. keeping hold of the ball. I was just going to think in my brain, just keep hold of the ball. He was on a gliding outside arc. Okay, there's no problem, but you're deep in Australia's 22. You've got a couple of minutes to go, and it has been the story of the game, holding onto the ball from both sides. Work, work, work. Settle out. Well, from both sides, I think the second half has been rather error strewn, hasn't it? Come, England. England doing enough. Well, I'll give you what it says on the, uh, the computer thing here. Yeah, handling errors, four from England, ten for Australia. But how good it is to see a full house at headquarters. And one of the reasons Australia are going to lose this game is penalties. Nine penalties to 18. The average is, what, 10, 12 for the whole game? And that's the key. They give too far, far too many pirate penalties away, whether it's been the mistakes or England's pressure. Osami. Here's Beal. But he did rather well there, did Paresi. There's McDermott. Isami again. There's Ikitao. He can really run when he gets a chance. Look at this. The offload to Latu. Oh, and then it's grabbed. And away goes Sam Simmons. And Simmons has got Blamar alongside him. And the hooker is going to add another try to what is a remarkable try scoring record. Yet another one for Newcastle's Jamie Blamire. He scored with his first touch on debut against the States. A hat-trick a week later against Canada. He scored last week against Tonga. Five tries in three appearances. It is now six in four. Well, the Newcastle Falkland flew up that left-hand side, didn't he? But again, it was made by Simmons. Good strike, try-scoring machine from Exeter. Again, it's a mistake from Australia. They just give the ball to one of the best finishers. Tremendous pace off the mark. He's not going to get there. Pops the ball back inside to the Newcastle hooker. And that is lovely. No one's coming in. He knows he's got it. He's celebrated already. Scored the 10th try against Tonga last week. And he's ending it, scoring the last try for England. And victory this week against the old enemy. That's eight on the bounce. Well done, England. Smith finishes off the day. It's an eighth straight win for that man against his old countryman, Eddie Jones, eight, Australian Hill. Curly Beale has enjoyed the occasion alongside Manitou Lange. A scoreline which perhaps flatters England a little bit. But in the end, they have beaten Australia by 32 points to 15. The North versus the South.